Uh, Stephen, thank you so much for your time. Um, almost an unfair spotlight that's uh, been thrown in the direction of Tatiana. Before we do that, let's talk about the impact of tax at this year's Olympics. I think 24 individuals representing Team South Africa. You must be immensely proud. Yeah, I think we, we're extremely fortunate that uh, over many years we've been able to uh, create an environment where if the athletes and the coaches uh, put in the hard work, they do, you know, rise through the ranks and they're able to perform. So, yes, we're extremely proud of our 25 athletes. We've got a, a bunch of alumni from the university as well. And then also we've got a, a whole group of coaches and even uh, a fencing referee who refereed yesterday in the semifinal of the men's EPA event. There is a proud history of tax at the uh, Olympics, and I think if you go back to uh, 2012 in London, um, tax athletes winning six medals, two gold, three silver, one bronze. A little bit of pressure on anybody else who followed 2012? Yeah, I think, look, um, there's always pressure on anybody who goes to the Olympic Games, whether you're from us or you're from any institution. I think as South Africans, we've got extremely high expectations of all our athletes, you know, Traditionally, we were always uh, trying to work out how many medals we would get beforehand. And, uh, you know, any athlete for South Africa that goes to the Olympics, there's always that added pressure um, of representing the country. So, you know, the athletes just have to do exactly what they normally do and uh, trust that the process will, will take care of the results. Well, the process takes place uh, at the HPC, and there is something that uh, you guys uh, in Pretoria at UP have been doing very right. Uh, how many sporting codes uh, are represented at uh, the university, at the High Performance Center? Yeah, so within Tuck Sport, we've got 35 sporting codes. Um, that ranges from our priority clubs uh, right through to our rec what we call our recreational clubs. So that ranges from your, your bigger top sporting codes to some of your more individual specialized codes um, and then right down to, you know, even eSports. We, we've started an a eSports program recently as well. You also got involved in Varsity Cup as well fairly recently. This year it was uh, held in a bubble and uh, you hosted both the Varsity Cup and the Varsity Shield competitions. That would have been something very different given the impact of COVID. Um, I'd have to say from my end of success, what's your take? Yeah, what, a, what an amazing opportunity that uh, the Varsity Cup um, board and, and the trustees and that uh, gave us as the University of Pretoria to be able to host. Um, and I'm extremely proud of the entire university structures. You know, there were so many people um, that came behind the scenes to, to make sure that we could um, contribute to pulling off a tournament with uh, the Varsity Cup organizers. So, yeah, it was something really special for us to be able to be part of. Um, it was just really the, the way people come together. And, and what was really nice for me was it was our first student-based competition again since last year when we went into lockdown so it was something that i think has given students athletes again a bit of hope that uh, you know they can play sports again there are a couple of other um and of course there is so much focus on somebody like tatiana who is the darling of se swimming at the moment but i think of the awesome foursome the uh, the rowers uh, who are going to be representing south africa in fact have already uh, been out on the water uh, the 4 by 100 meter um, relay team is one that a lot of people will also be throwing eyes on. And a lot of these athletes would have passed through your hands. Yeah, not mine. Definitely not <laughs> mine. But uh, they, they've made, uh, they've definitely, you know, many of them have, we've been fortunate they've made it at their home here at the university. And uh, we're extremely proud of them. We, we're glad that we can partner with them and their coaches and, and the different programs to be able to provide that environment that is, that is hopefully conducive. Uh, to high performance sport. You know, this afternoon I was watching the men's hockey team um, mm -hmm. when they were playing against the Netherlands. What a phenomenal game for South African men's hockey. And, you know, I was just counting how many of those uh, young men have come through some other university structure over the last number of years. And it just shows you the value of university sports, I believe, um, as providing that, that foundation. So it's not only us, all the other institutions in the country also significantly contribute. So. Uh, university sports is a, is a key producer um, of high-level athletes in our country. Yeah, it was a phenomenal performance for anybody at home who missed it. Uh, they surrendered a 5-3 defeat at the end, but uh, had uh, built up a 3-0 lead against the European, champion, uh, European champions. It must be said, Netherlands have consistently been one of the top teams uh, in field hockey. 
What is it about um, Tux HPC in particular, in particular that draws so many athletes that want to seemingly make it their home and want to operate from, from that space? I think the first priority for us is, is to try and create an environment that is conducive. And, and secondly to that is it's a, it's a place where they feel safe. Um, where they feel safe that they can they can do the work, they can do the training, that they they have a, a, a environment that is conducive to be able to win and lose. Um, because you know, I mean, uh, high performance isn't a linear, uh, straight line to higher uh, achievements. There's there's a lot of losses along the way. There's a lot of failure along the way. So I think that is that is really important. Plus, the other side of that is, is the ability to study, I believe, at, at an institution that's got a, a, a highly reputable reputation as, as an academic uh, institution. So I think it's a variety of combinations. And then uh, we have some of the most passionate coaches that, that are willing to come into our system and, and you know, reinforce the culture that has been built up over the last 20 years. Well, uh, I certainly hope that we'll get a chance to talk um, soon because I know you're also passionate about um, the state of mind that uh, many athletes find themselves in, particularly given what uh, we've seen with COVID over the past year. Final take uh, on the Olympics. It's been very disjointed, the build-up uh, to this year's Games. Uh, it was already um, postponed. COVID-19 has had a massive impact. Uh, do you foresee um, a lot of these uh, athletes being able to perform at their peak given uh, all of the difficulties experienced in the past year? Yeah, look, I'm the last person to try and make excuses, but we've, you know, we've also got to count realities. And uh, I think what we've seen, for example, today, men's football, the, the men's hockey, Tatiana, there was a lot of resilience shown. And as, as a country, our athletes generally show a lot of resilience. So they, they may not be at their peak. You know, for many of them, this is the first international competitions they are competing in since 2019, you know, late 2019. So, so it is a, we've got to keep that in mind. For some of your, your European-based countries uh, and others, they've maybe had a few more opportunities. You know, many of our athletes across a variety of sporting codes haven't had the financial resources or the opportunity to travel because of certain um, restrictions. But again, those all sound like excuses. Um, I can tell you one thing's for sure. No athlete uh, in South African team, in my opinion, is there just to have fun. They're there to give their best. And whatever their best is going to be, hopefully we'll see that um, over the next couple of days as well. Dr. Stephen Ball, thank you so much for your time, your input. And uh, we hope that uh, the athletes that have passed through um, UP continue to shine. And uh, they certainly have started off well. Tatiana Schoonmaker is only one of them.